When Zoe Alexander received four no's from the X Factor judges, her entire life fell apart over a 10 year period, and the whole thing was documented on camera from a hundred different angles. It all began with this email right here, in which Zoe first reached out to the X Factor requesting to appear on the show, explaining that she was a 22 year old pink impersonator but wanted to audition as herself. After being accepted as a contestant, Zoe was asked to send through five songs she wanted to sing, yet the X Factor then specifically demanded that Zoe audition as Pink. They wanted me to sing a Pink song. He basically said that if I didn't, I wouldn't be going on the show. So I agreed. After agreeing to do so, Zoe was invited in for an interview where they continued to ask her about Pink. All he wanted to talk about was Pink. Have you seen Pink live? Do you know Pink's real name? Do you think you're like Pink in real life? With Zoe adding that they had no interest in her personally, showing that the X Factor had an ulterior motive to create a story out of her being Pink. Before heading out on stage, one of the X Factor producers then encouraged Zoe to give an overly emotional performance. And he said, make sure you use all of the stage. If the judges say no, beg them, cry, get down on your knees and beg. So when she'd appear in front of the judges just a few minutes later, this is what went down. And I'm gonna sing So What by Pink. Pink, okay. Off you go. After stating that she was gonna sing So What by Pink, Zoe gave a boisterous emotional performance using the whole stage with excessive facial expressions. However, the focus on her physical delivery and a few other things which we'll talk about later meant the singing was fairly average, leading the judges to stop her mid-song before stating this. I honestly think that you need to go away and take the time to find yourself as an artist. Despite this, the judges were kind enough to give her a second chance. Should we get a second song? Yeah. Yeah. I want to give you a chance. Yet she was then stopped midway through her second song before the judges once again implied that they didn't think she was good enough. Because at the moment it just sounds like every other average sort of singing voice. But as the judges explained that she wouldn't be going to the next round, Zoe turned the criticism back onto them. You told me to sing a pink song. I didn't want to sing a pink song. Never, you guys told I me never to, told sing a pink you song. to sing a pink song. Zoe then proceeded to lose her temper before bringing her dad onto the stage, swearing at the judges and throwing the microphone toward them. After some more chaos then went down backstage, Zoe lashed out at the cameraman ending the segment. However, in terms of negative feedback, this was really only the start. The family was so distraught from the event that they drove home in silence, yet Zoe seemed convinced that they wouldn't include her performance in the final cut of the show. I still didn't believe that they would show my audition on TV. I mean, how could they show the systematic bullying leading to a breakdown of a woman? It would be too upsetting. Until about an hour after arriving home, when a Daily Mail reporter who was at the audition called the family to get a statement for an article and to tell Zoe that she was definitely going to appear on television. They will edit it in any way they can to show it on TV because it is TV gold. With this information, Zoe's mental health began to decline rapidly. I couldn't sleep. I just, I just stayed up every night. I can't stress to you enough what an emotional wreck I was. I didn't trust anyone and I just kept breaking down, crying. Made even worse by the countless articles talking about the situation before the episode had even gone live. Then after six weeks of fear, Zoe's phone began to ring. I got a phone call from The X Factor informing me that they were going to air my audition. I was honestly so terrified. I just said no and put the phone down. Within hours of the episode going live, the performance was being called the most shocking audition ever, while other public publications such as The Mirror called her X Factor's most shocking contestant ever. As a result of this, Zoe stated, I was recognized everywhere I went, laughed at, pointed at, threatened. Both myself and my dad have been threatened with violence to the point that my dad had to physically defend us. I'd go to the gym and people would watch the video on their phones in front of me and then whisper and laugh. Despite this, Judge Tulsi Constastavlos refused to change her attitude on the situation, stating there is always going to be the odd person who throws a massive hiss Fit. Thousands of people over the years have auditioned, and this one person couldn't control their temper and threw a fit. But I don't think that's a reason for everyone to go, you've got to think about their emotions. That was one person. Those are her issues, and she chose to bring those issues to the stage. Given she now had no other option, Zoe began to defend herself by stating that the show deliberately tried to make me out to be this girl with a bad attitude, before she theorized that the X Factor deliberately encouraging her to sing a pink song was part of a plan to increase ratings through televising a poor 
performance, which would explain why the producers encouraged her to be emotional in the minutes before the audition. Zoe Alexander was set up for a fall, and yes, she couldn't sing, but that isn't the issue under discussion. Setting people up to mockery by deliberately enhancing their self-image beyond their talents is cruelty bordering on human rights infringement. Zoe's volatile nature would have been spotted in one of the earlier auditions, and then stoked up so she would outburst on TV, and thereby encourage a flagging audience to tune in with the expectation of future Jerry Springer moments. Shameful, just shameful, yet others were a little less compassionate. Look, she may have been set up by producers, which isn't fair, but at the end of the day, she can't sing. The judges were just being polite by using the identity thing as an excuse because she did get to sing a second song, which she was also rubbish at. Her violent slash physical outburst was wrong full stop. Yes, it's unfair for producers to mislead her, but her reaction was atrocious and very bratty. Also, her dad shouldn't have brought her back onto the stage either, as this escalated the whole situation. She got to sing two songs, whereas most people get to sing one, and she wasn't good enough and of, yet Zoe didn't stop pushing back against what had happened. Approximately seven months after the audition went live, an article was published by BBC News titled, X Factor Cleared Over Pink Tribute Act Complaints, in which it was explained that Zoe had gone to the government broadcasting agency Ofcom, claiming that the X Factor had ignored her track choices, changed her song list, and dictated her outfit and hairstyle, insisting on her appearing in her pink persona. Yet the agency found that the judge's comments were balanced, and her violent reaction after the audition was unacceptable by any standards, whatever her perceived grievance. Accordingly, Ofcom has not upheld Miss Alexander's complaint, with articles such as this one perpetuating Zoe's nightmare. People said to me, oh, don't worry, it'll blow over, it won't last forever. And it lasted for years and years and years. Things became even worse when Zoe's performance racked up almost 100 million views in compilations such as these two. However, with comments such as, I don't trust any of these after hearing Zoe Alexander's story, it seemed there was more that was yet to be discussed. On the 20th of July, 2020, Zoe uploaded her own video titled Zoe Alexander X Factor The Truth, in which she now revealed that the performance itself had been edited and even CGI'd to make the X Factor look good and Zoe look bad. She stated the judges actually began the audition by essentially insulting her. And he moved on to tell me that I was very overconfident, which wasn't shown on TV. And after she started singing, the audience went crazy by cheering. However, in the final cut of the show, this had been reversed, so the audience was instead cheering while the judges gave their opinions. In the broadcast footage, the audience reaction has been completely changed. The audience could be heard clapping and cheering her words as if she was voicing the opinion of the entire audience. In fact, the audience at that moment sat in silence. As a person who was in the audience, we were told to keep quiet when the judges say anything, so yeah, you're definitely telling the truth. Zoe went on to explain that the music they played was also different to what she'd sent through. The track that they played was not the track that I had sent them. It was in a different key and it was a different track. And when she'd thrown the microphone, she'd done so because they'd turned it off while she was explaining what had happened. Then I realised that they turned the microphone off and that was when I threw it to the floor. But somehow in, in the video, I threw it like that. I didn't. I, I threw it to the floor. Zoe then debunked the segment where she'd seemingly walked off and come back with her dad. I categorically did not leave the stage and subsequently return hand in hand with my father. Once again, the footage has been completely fabricated. Another example of the X Factor's over-imaginative editing. Before she added that even the judges' comments had been inserted at a later date. Also, Nicole did not stand up and say, no, baby, no, that did not happen. So they were cut in afterwards to produce the footage in their fictitious storyline. After heading backstage, another scene was filmed in which Zoe begged the cameraman to stop filming. However, this also didn't make the cut. I, I was saying, please, please stop filming me, please stop filming me. This scene was cut from the broadcast footage and replaced with even more fabricated footage, which better suited their storyline, as it didn't portray me as aggressive. The real footage would have clearly demonstrated the broken and emotional state into which I had been bullied. And with this information, everybody began to stand up for her. I admit I was one of the many who laughed and thought you were this crazy lady who was just mad that you lost the audition. I'm so sorry, they're so horrible for doing you like this, with others informing Zoe that her video had blown up outside of YouTube. Over on TikTok, a relatively small account made a 15 million view video talking about what had happened, which when duetted by Zoe, gained a further 27 million views, with almost everybody sticking up for Zoe. As a result, Nicole Scherzinger's comment section began to fill with comments regarding Zoe's treatment, and therefore the judge did this. Can we just talk about the fact that Nicole Scherzinger has blocked me on TikTok? Despite this, the mainstream media ran with the story, causing the X Factor to backpedal rapidly. You have made the X Factor turn off their Instagram comments. You have made the X Factor turn off their YouTube comments. And you have made 
The X Factor, change the title and description of my X Factor audition video. With a 19 million view audition video having since been removed altogether. On top of this, Zoe's appearance has also been taken out of the mega viral top five angriest contestants video, which when considering Zoe's poor attitude and the show's sketchy editing, feels like a reasonable middle ground between the two parties.